to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Help us tonight in the name of Jesus. And I will not be silent, and I will always worship you as long as I am breathing. I will talk One more time, let it come from the depth of your heart. And I will I will not be silent I will always worship you As long as Help us tonight, Spirit of the Living God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Please be seated. I want you to do well to review all of these teachings. There is so much you can really understand at a go. Let me encourage us to get these teachings and listen to them again and again. The Bible declares that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Please, uh, I pray that I don't break any protocol, but let me just honor these great servants of God myself. Thank you so much, Pastor Imos Fenwa, for coming. And then, thank you, Pastor Shola. The Lord bless you and honor you in the name of Jesus Christ. We, our first session, we began to discuss on the subject of knowing God. We'll never be able to talk about manifestations in the kingdom until we really, truly know the Lord. And I just felt stirred in my spirit to teach tonight on encounters. Hallelujah. And I pray in the name of Jesus that our hearts will be open to learn. I truly salute your pastor for allowing this platform for believers to mature. This is the only way believers get matured, when they are exposed to the whole counsel of God, especially at times like this, we need the truth that can not only set free but build up. Remember our scripture earlier on? I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. Job chapter 42 and verse 5 for tonight, I'm teaching on supernatural encounters very briefly and then we'll pray just to open our eyes to the mysteries of the kingdom that empower the saints to rise and walk in victory job chapter 42 please and verse 5 i have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear job said but now my eye seeth thee I have heard of a theoretical God 
I've heard of him from someone else. But now I have an encounter myself. John chapter 4. Very interesting story. Let's start from verse 39. John chapter 4 from verse 39. This was an encounter that Jesus had, if you remember your scripture, with the woman by the well, the Samaritan woman we call it. We're reading down to verse 42. Ready? It says, and many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him for the saying of the woman. Look at this now. This was when Jesus had an encounter with the woman. She was so touched. She ran and said, come see a man that had told me what I had done. Now, they did not know Jesus. They had not met him. But they believed the woman. Please keep the scripture there. They believed on him not because they had an encounter. They believed because they trusted the woman's word. And many of the Samaritans in that city believed on him for the saying of the woman which testified. He told me all that I ever did. Next verse. So when the Samaritans were come to him, they besought him that he would tarry with them and he abode there two days. And many more believed because of his own word. They heard him teach. Are you seeing the levels now? They had the woman's testimony, and so they came to church. But now they heard Jesus teach himself. Verse 42. Let's read together, please. One, two, read. And they said unto the woman, Now we believe, not because of your sayings, for we have heard him ourselves, and know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. Supernatural encounters. That it is possible that the testimony of someone or his dealings with God can be so alluring, it can bring you to God. But that the, the God's ultimate desire is not that you know him as the God of another person. His desire is to bring you an encounter. Are we blessed? All through scripture, we see that many people had encounters with God and it became the basis for their conviction, their stability, and their exploits. Write this down, please. An encounter is a supernatural experience that brings the reality of God to a person or a people. A supernatural experience that brings the reality of God to a person or a people. They are called encounters. So when you hear about the wonders, when you hear about the great things that God has done and continues to do in the life of people, it, it cultivates that hunger but their testimonies are not enough. You must come to God and have an encounter that produces convictions. If we do not contend for genuine encounters, this generation may not have the power and the stamina to, to stand the reality of the times that we are in. Are we together? The days that we are in, the revival, the awakening that is sweeping across the nation will not only require people of zeal, it will require people of encounter. Are we blessed? And by the grace of God and by the privilege of the election of grace, I am a student of the move of God. I have studied the moves of God. I have studied men and women who have had encounters with God and the validity of their encounters were demonstrated in their lifetime. I've had the privilege of meeting a few people who were able to pioneer major revivals in their lifetime. And I thank God for the honor of being used by God to do a bit of that. So I, what I am speaking about respectfully is not theory. I know what I am saying. And if you pay attention to these truths, I assure you that something will come upon you in this conference and you will run like the foxes of Samson in the name of Jesus Christ. There are four dimensions of encounters that I believe 
from scripture every believer that intends to manifest the kingdom every believer that intends to do business with god in these last days you must contend for these dimensions of encounters they produce maturity and they produce balance in the life of the believer hallelujah very quickly i'll run through them and i want you to please pay attention the words that we speak they are spirit and life it's not just an education it's not just an intellectual communication this is not just a theological dissertation this is the ministry of the spirit hallelujah four encounters i submit to you let me tell you a little story i'm a student of scripture i study the bible by the grace of god but this teaching came to me by revelation I was not reading any Bible the Holy Ghost came to me and began to open me up that there are four dimensions of encounters and that I must teach the body of Christ this truth to help believers mature and really begin to prove the reality of the power of God can I tell you this a generation is gradually getting tired of religion a generation is gradually getting tired of spiritual propositions without the grace dimension to de to deliver their validity and technology has made people know that things can be proven you can say this and there are statistics to prove it it is that same hunger now people have brought it to the church to say if you claim god is god if he heals if he lifts if he blesses i am sick and tired of theory i want an experience that whose conviction will last my lifetime and if we are unable to deliver to that degree then sooner or later many people will forget the name of the lord but may god forbid it not in our lifetime are we blessed yes encounters number one the first supernatural encounter that every believer needs in this order to be relevant and to be able to host dimensions of God in your life to a territory to a generation is called an encounter with Jesus the son of the living God please write it down an encounter with Jesus the son of the living God John chapter 3, the Bible says, and verse 16, popular scripture says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the intent that whosoever believeth in him should not perish eternal damnation. The word perish there does not necessarily just mean die physically. Eternal damnation, but that we should have what the Bible calls zoe, the life of God. Everybody say, encounter with Jesus. There are many people in church who have not met Jesus. There are many people around Christian circles who have truly not had an encounter with Jesus. You can be around the things of God. You can even be part of the move of God. But an encounter with Jesus is not corporate. Number one, it is a personal affair. Those days, well, in the south yeah, i think it was student union and then in the north it was fcs they would ask you do you have a personal relationship with jesus that word personal was the key word not have you been around church for a while a personal encounter with the lord jesus first john chapter 5 the epistle of john first john chapter 5 help us holy spirit first john chapter 5 we'll start from verse 11 first john 5 and 11 this is the record that god hath given us eternal life and that this life is in his son next verse please it says he that hath the son hath life and he that hath not the son of god hath not life period so if you say you are born again then that must have been that you have encountered the son of the living god 
the savior of the world can i tell you this we need by the grace of god to remind a generation again that there is no other name given unto man by which men can be saved believing a man of god does not give you salvation brothers and sisters hear me believing a living church does not give you salvation believing an apostle a prophet following an apostle a prophet a teacher as important as it is you are only an effective follower you are not saved are we together according to the authority of scripture the condition for being a partaker of the life of god is not proximity with the anointing it's not proximity with church it's a personal encounter with the son of the living god you will think what i'm teaching is so basic and simple and everyone should know except for the fact that the day there is a day that this earth will be judged and let me tell you whoever does not have that encounter with the son of god he says i saw that the sea gave up its dead everyone gave up his dead and whosoever's name was not in the book of life was casted into the lake of fire that burned with sulfur and brimstone this he said is the second death and he said right for these things are faithful and true i don't mean to make you afraid but i tell you sincerely one day this earth will wrap up the lord jesus christ is coming we establish this in the future in in, in the morning and it's not going to be in so distant future i am convinced personally from the authority of scripture because the one sign the bible gives to characterize the coming of christ is that this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached as a witness to all generations they don't have to receive it it there just has to be a testament that they had it and the bible says then the end will come an encounter with the son of the living god john chapter 10 and verse 10 says the thief cometh not that means you will never see the thief around any vicinity but for to steal to kill and to destroy and he said but i am come that ye may have life and that you may have that life more abundantly so the first encounter you need that starts your journey your christian experience more than church more than a pastor more than a man of god is an encounter with the son of the living god we are all sons of the living god but there is the son of the living god jesus the christ there is no other name given unto men by which we must be saved respectfully do you know that you can do a random selection around church and really ask people are you saved and you will be surprised how many people are not saved they are committed they are sincere they are not evil people but they are just not saved sincerity is not the condition to be with jesus it is salvation romans chapter 10 from verse 8 to 10 the word is nigh thee even in thy heart and in thy mouth the word of faith which we preach that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. The formula is in the next verse. With the heart, man believes unto righteousness. Then with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Hallelujah. There are three things that you receive for having an encounter with the Son of the living God. Please write it according to the authority of scripture if and when you truly have an encounter with the son of the living god there are three things that you receive number one access to righteousness romans chapter 5 and verse 17. these are fundamentals of the christian faith that if not known every other dimension of truth will be standing on a wrong foundation romans 5 and verse 17 please access to righteousness for if by one man's offense death reigned by one it says much more we they which receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one jesus christ righteousness great men like ew kenyon who had been a great blessing to the body of christ and still continue to bless the body of christ even though 
they have long gone i think he defined one of my first definitions of righteousness came from his books the ability to stand before the father's presence without a sense of inferiority condemnation and guilt that's what he defined as righteousness even though today i would say righteousness is more than just a sense of being free righteousness is actually the nature of god without righteousness you cannot receive the way the condition to have the life of god is that you have righteousness equal to that of jesus so before you receive the life of god you must receive righteousness righteousness is what qualifies you to be a partaker of the life of god it is impossible to have the life of god until you have righteousness are we blessed the first thing we receive from having an, a genuine encounter with the son of god is righteousness the righteousness of the son of the living god at work in me that i have received it number two the second thing that we receive when we have an encounter with jesus the son of the living god is access to the life of god what the bible calls zoe the life of god zoe is more than eternal life please look up there are different kinds of life and some of you may have heard me teach that zoe is not eternal life everybody has eternal life the condition for eternal life really is not being born again it's being born once you pass through the womb of a woman you have eternal life whether in this earth or beyond this earth you are still living the life is eternal when you get people saved you say where will you spend eternal life not will you you are going to spend eternal life the question is location not the possibility are we together now remember jesus we're bible students isn't it remember jesus was talking to he was giving a parable about the rich man and lazarus both of them had eternal life it was just location the man was still alive after this earth so the life jesus came to give us i know that it was translated eternal life but it's not really eternal life it's called zoe the life of god is a quality of life the very kind of life great men like papa hagin call it the god kind of life well i respect and i believe them but revelation is progressive it's not the god kind it is the very life of god there are not many kinds it is god's life given to men are we blessed a superior kind of life this is what i get when i encounter the son of the living god now because it is spiritual in nature you may not appreciate it we are sensory so when things happen and you have a physical impact usually you will believe it but when you when you receive of his life in what you call the salvation experience usually you may not necessarily feel anything physical so it may be difficult for you to believe that a translation and an exchange just happen in the spirit but it is still the truth of scripture that anyone who encounters the son of god has the life of god please say i have the life of god number three what do you receive for having an encounter with the son of god access to the grace of god hmm. access to the grace of god access to the grace of God. Ephesians chapter 1, please, and verse 3. The grace of God is a powerful mystery. This is my definition of the grace of God. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible says, who had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. This is my definition of grace. Grace is more than just unmerited access. Grace is the generic name given to every spiritual blessing that is given to the believer routed through the office of the Christ. It's called grace. 
So anointing is grace. Wisdom is grace. Faith is grace. All spiritual blessings that have been given to the saints but can only be accessed through the office of the Christ is called grace. When you limit your understanding of grace to just um, unmerited access or being pardoned from iniquity by reason of being in Christ, it is very, very limiting. So when we have access to grace, it's more than just favor. Uh -uh. That's why the Bible says grace and peace be multiplied unto you. And then the Bible says that, um, how, how does he put it? It says God is able to make all grace. I think I shared that the last time I was here. The grace of God. Unfortunately, and, and lovingly speaking, for most believers, our, our understanding of grace just has to do with the substitutionary sacrifice of Christ and receiving it and then, and then that's all but grace is more than that grace represents every spiritual blessing allocated for the victory of the saints but it is only routed in christ an unbeliever cannot have grace can have mercy but not grace are we blessed the grace of God only comes through the office the administrator of the grace of God is Christ himself is God helping us now so if you tell me you have encountered Jesus I search for this notice my choice of words access to righteousness access to the life of God access to the grace of God what does access mean potential it does not mean experience access means that the door has been opened but it is up to you to come into the experience of it for instance we have received zoe the life of god but ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18 says having their understanding darkened it says being alienated from the life of god through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness that is in their heart so it is true that he that had the son had life but because it is access it takes a level of spiritual illumination to come into the experience of it this is where faith is applicable so it is by grace but then through faith to become our experience dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the phase of development lord Grant me the discipline.